one of our guys has been scanning through the transcripts function on our website. And which, again, our enemies use just probably more than we do. Well, James White once again responded to the Baalgate controversy uh, sweeping over the internet that he helped to ignite when he took to his program and attacked me for my criticism of infant damnation. I've never heard anything more stupid in my life. I really haven't. I'll just be honest. There, that, there is not a scintilla of honesty in what Warren McGrew said. He's not a stupid man, so he's just a massively dishonest man. You would actually want to use that as a debating subject? You're disgusting. You're shameful. You need to grow up or or get born again or something because you got a problem. Now, I don't see James as an enemy, though it does appear that's how he perceives me given his repeated personal attacks over the years and his recent comments. I just sincerely believe he's wrong on this topic and that his stance and teaching results in extreme hurt and fear and doubt in the lives of those who've tragically lost a, a child. And th this isn't some abstract thing for me. I was raised a Calvinist. I was taught infant damnation. I affirmed it. I taught it. I mean, I, I personally hurt people by way of teaching it. I, I still have their faces burned into my mind, and I can still look, uh, I can still see the looks on their face when I was explaining this to them. It still haunts me. I mean, just this morning, I was, I was speaking with my mother, and she recalled an incident many years ago where a family member had lost a child and had reached out to her for comfort and said, you know, do you believe the baby's with the Lord or, or something along those lines? And my mom responded, trying to be a consistent Calvinist, trying to be God-honoring, trying to give the truth even when it's painful. She believed in infant damnation, and she told this family member that she just didn't know. She couldn't be sure. And, uh, and my mom was expressing to me, even years, I mean, many, many years later, 30-some-odd 30, 30 years later, if not more, that uh, she still had this deep regret and sorrow that she had said this, that at the time she thought she was being God-honoring, but this has haunted her all these years, and she wished she could go back and, and correct the mistake and just grab hold of herself and say, don't you know, God is better than this. Like, don't go telling people that. That's You're, you're doing a disservice to the goodness of God, and you're hurting these people. So no, I'm, I'm not here to attack James. I am here to call him to task for this awful teaching so others can see where his doctrine leads them, but I'm focused on the claims and entailments of his system. Um, someone sent me a video that he had done. As soon as it came up and I saw who it was, just clicked it off. I don't have any interest in whatsoever. And I'm here to hopefully, and, and I realize this may be a vain hope, but hopefully help James see just how mistaken he is on the doctrine. I don't want him telling another grieving parent directly or indirectly that they can't have assurance that God loves their child. I don't want any parent who's lost a, a, a child to think that God is casting them into eternal torment. The amount of grief that I carry over holding and teaching that doctrine is immense. And I, I, don't, I can't even imagine how many people James has affected with this teaching over the years, and I don't want to see him continuing to add to the harm that he's already done with it. And so I'm objecting because of how James presents God, how he hurts grieving parents, and how ultimately this will even hurt himself. That's how cults get started. And I think some of these guys are going to be starting their own cults before long. This whole group of people created a controversy. They've done videos. Um, this one guy um, who's just, he's, he's Joseph Smith, and, but smarter. Uh, I mean, this guy could start a cult on, a, on his own. Mm, that is good. Oh, oh sorry. I was, uh, I was just drinking some Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah. Look, Warren, you keep going down this road. In no longer than 15 years, you will not be claiming any kind of Christian faith at all. But the controversy is far from over. James has now placed himself in the uncomfortable position of arguing that a consistent adherence to Reformed theology requires one to affirm infant damnation. And folks are taking notice. They're looking back at his older broadcasts, at his articles, and they, they realize that he's out of step with Calvinists like John MacArthur and John Piper and many others, that they're out of step with James White and consistent Reformed theology. 
And now a sort of civil war is brewing in the reform circles. All those Calvinists who defended James and argued against infant damnation are waking up to the reality that their allegiance was misguided. They're being confronted with the logical implications of adhering to Augustinian anthropology, and some folks are starting to realize they hitched their horse to the wrong wagon. My apologies, Doctor. No hard feelings, I hope. <clears throat> all in all, it's been exciting, but a very interesting trip. Someone even came up with a Geneva doll. Did you see that one? Whose baby is this? Grandma, she's my very own Geneva baby. Dim from the womb, with real sulfur and brimstone smell. But these folks, I don't, I don't know that they sleep. Um, I, just the stuff they've cranked out over a nothing burger. Telling folks that they can't have confidence their child is with the Lord is far from a nothing burger, James. Telling grieving parents that God from all eternity ordained that their child die, and then quite possibly as one of the unelect so that he can condemn it to eternal torment for his glory, that hits a little different. It wakes people up to the reality of their beliefs. Well, we believe God is good and loves children, but these extra-biblical doctrines call that into question. Maybe we should carefully reconsider what we believe and who we're listening to. James, what do you think about the parents that are grieving or have grieved the loss of a child and really are paying attention to this controversy? Given how stupid you have to be, to be just, I'll just be honest with you, you got to be really, you got, you got to have the IQ of a wet shoelace to have engaged in this controversy. Now, maybe James just wasn't speaking about parents who had experienced a loss. Maybe he was just focused on himself and his reputation that has suffered as a result of this controversy. Maybe that's what he was speaking on. Maybe that's the thought behind his insulting comments. But I'm not sure that's any better. Look, it's, it's chapter 10, paragraph 3 of the Westminster Confession of Faith of 1648. So let's take a look at uh, chapter 10 of the Westminster Confession of Faith here. Uh, you'll note here this is regarding the effectual calling. And let's not, let's not skip ahead. Let's just go through these uh, four points briefly. It says, All those whom God hath predestinated unto life, and those only, right? Because we're talking about um, unconditional election and limited atonement. He is pleased in his appointment and accepted time effectually to call by his word and spirit out of that state of sin and death in which they are by nature, to grace and salvation by Jesus Christ, enlightening their minds, okay, do you see how their minds have to be enlightened, spiritually and savingly, to understand the things of God, taking away their heart of stone and giving them a heart of flesh, renewing their wills, and by his almighty power, determining them to that which is good, and effectually drawing them to Jesus Christ. And yet so they come most freely, being made willing by his grace. And then we look at uh, issue two here, point two. This effectual call is of God's free and special grace alone, not from anything at all foreseen in man, who is altogether passive therein, until being quickened and renewed by the Holy Spirit, he is therefore, uh, thereby enabled to uh, answer this call and to embrace the grace uh, offered and conveyed in it. And so we see here that uh, this is where people are predestined to um, uh, eternal life or to be one of the unelect who are going to be used as vessels of wrath uh, to demonstrate God's uh, attributes for his glory at uh, judgment. And so this was all done long before your baby was conceived. Uh, this was done long before the baby came to life or perished uh, in the womb or, or as a young child. Uh, the Westminster is saying this act of choosing who would be saved was done uh, essentially in eternity past. Now, elect infants, paint a note to that. That's choice infants. That's selected infants. That's a, a, a subset. Dying in infancy are regenerated and saved by Christ through the Spirit who worketh when and where and how he pleaseth. So also are all other elect persons who are incapable of being outwardly called by the ministry of the word. Okay, now what happens to the unelect? 
We have the elect who were chosen to eternal life. What happens to the unelect? According to uh, consistent confessional reform theology, the unelect uh, are to perish. They're to suffer eternal torment. Others not elected, although they may be called by the ministry of the word and may have some common operations of the spirit, yet they never truly come to Christ and therefore cannot be saved, much less can men not professing the Christian religion be saved in any other way whatsoever, be they never so diligent to frame their lives according to the light of nature and the law of that religion they do profess, and to assert and maintain that they may, is very pernicious and to be detested. So we see here, what is it? We have elect infants and those not elected. Oh my goodness. Yes, you're right. James is confessional. So the question arises, will you be an inconsistent Calvinist like John MacArthur? Or will you be a consistent confessional Calvinist like James White? Will you have elect infants and unelect infants? Will you have babies being determined before the foundation of the world to be cast into eternal torment, like James White, a consistent confessional Calvinist? Or will you go more of the John MacArthur or John Piper school where they take more of an Anabaptist or Eastern Orthodox or historic uh, Jewish perspective of what happens to infants who perish in the womb? That's the question before us all. This 86-87 is the area where... Um... I read uh, Chosen by God and started reading reform literature and so on and so forth. But um, I know that was after the atheism series that we did on the radio program. And so somewhere before I became reformed, wow, I repeated the perspectives I had when I was a kid. You know, I was raised independent fundamentalist Baptist. So you had uh, age of accountability and, you know, stuff like this. You didn't have any emphasis upon um, federal headship, uh, union with Christ, union with Adam, um, any of that kind of theology just wasn't there. Now, if, if you've been keeping up with all of this, then you're aware that in 1987, James wrote an article calling the notion of infant damnation inconceivable. Inconceivable! And here he notes how he shifted his perspective when he began reading R.C. Sproul's uh, book, Chosen by God, and other Reformed books. So what scripture did these Reformers point to that so clearly taught Reformed theology that it convinced James to abandon his previous views and embrace Reformed theology with all of its entailments like infant damnation? That's what the Westminster Confession says. It uses the phrase, elect infants. Okay, how do you defend that biblically? What are elect infants? Well, obviously we're dealing here with <clears throat> speculative theology. That's right. James became indoctrinated into reformed Augustinianism in the late eighties. He knows his views are not explicit in scripture and various passages actually stand in opposition to them. So instead he relies on speculative theology to prop up his presuppositions. We all must learn to think presuppositionally. Now consider my initial statement that sparked James's outrage. I commented that infant damnation has the same mindset behind it as pagan child sacrifice. To counter this, many Calvinists online have said, well then abortion is the greatest heaven filling thing ever. And so they've argued that we should just murder all of our children and send them straight to heaven. Think about this for a second. They're upset that I compared their view of infant damnation to pagan child sacrifice. And so their argument to respond to this is to tell me that we need to murder all of our children. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Wait till I get going. Where was I? But let's follow this line of what we will charitably refer to as reasoning. If they're committed to such a utilitarian approach, why don't they begin a campaign of murdering everyone to keep hell from filling up? If there isn't anyone around to procreate, well then, hell never receives a new occupant. Do we, do we see how insane such reasoning is? It, it's, it's, it's utilitarian. It's the ends justify the means. Let's go and sin so that grace may abound. This is countering an unbiblical belief, defending it with more unbiblical reasoning. That's what's happening here. 
James has spent the last several years attacking me on his program while simultaneously refusing to debate the very issues he's attacking me over. He often comes across so confident, but his responses lack substance and instead rely on logical fallacies, personal attacks, and a lot of distraction. Now, in light of the recent controversy, I've seen a lot of Calvinists say, James doesn't believe in infant damnation. And even after we've played clips of him affirming there are elect infants and unelect infants who are treated just like the elect and unelect adults, even after all of this, many people are still in denial. And I get it. A, a lot of folks look up to James and it can be difficult to see such huge flaws with someone you respect. And to be sure, there's a lot that James has done over the years that is worthy of our respect, that I respect him for. But his defense that God damns infants to eternal torment, that isn't one of them. If you're a Calvinist and you find yourself at a crossroads over this whole controversy, you're being presented with at least three options. You can stay where you are and just ignore the contradictions, you know, close a blind eye, so to speak. You can press even deeper following James down the path of presuppositional thinking and affirm his speculative extra biblical theology and all that comes with it, like infant damnation. Or you can recognize good people often have bad ideas and reformed theology, Augustinian anthropology is one of them, but Jesus He's the way, the truth, and the life, so you can follow him, working out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's how cults get started. And I think some of these guys are going to be starting their own cults before long. This one guy, um, who's just, he's, he's Joseph Smith, and, but smarter. Uh, I mean, this guy could start a cult on, on his own. That's how cults get started.